I don't know. Give anymore. up! I don't know anymore. Give I noticed up. that all the Canadian radio stations start with the letter C. I wondered Give why up. that was. What you're deciding is the rest of your life. They are there to find out what your needs are. What you're deciding is the rest of your life. What your needs are. You're just what your needs are. What you're deciding is the rest of your life. What you're deciding is the what your needs are. What you have the rest of your life. They there the rest of your life.
Hippocampe. 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 Main d'idée. Idée campe au campe. Main d'hippo. Hippo joue la pétanque d'idée. Il découpe les pétanques d'hippo. Hippothalamus, l'hypophyse d'idées. Mm. Hippo, plante hyperpote d'été. DDT sur hyperpote d'hippo. Idée décide d'aider le pauvre hippo. Idée détruit hyperpote d'été. Et il détale du campement d'hippo. Mm. Ouais, en fait, c'est que hippo, il campe dans le campement d'idées. Puis lui, idée, ben, c'est le chum à hippo. C'est un, un mec qui s'appelle idée. Et puis un autre qui s'appelle hippo. En fait. Alors, c'est ça. Puis lui, idée, il campe dans le campement d'hippo. Et puis c'est ça, Hippo joue la pétanque d'idées. Et puis lui, il, dit, ben, il coupe les pétanques d'Hippo. <rire> et puis là, ça ne veut strictement rien dire d'autre que Hippo Thalamus, l'hypophysé d'idées. Et voilà. C'est <rire> d'été. Euh... Oui, ouais, c'est ça. Hippo plante euh, hyper pote d'été. Et là, c'est ça, grave euh, ma, euh, menace écologique. DDT sur hyper pote euh, d'Hippo. Alors, il décide d'aider le pauvre Hippo. <rire> il détruit hyper pote d'été. Et il détale du campement d'Hippo. Et, et voilà. voilà. <rire> il y a des suites, mais là, on s'en est arrêté. En fait. ouais, on en a essayé <rire> plusieurs <rire> suites, mais on s'est dit qu'il valait mieux arrêter là. Bang, bang, bang. C'est un western à Radio Zone ce soir. On est compte comme Radio Zone, c'est de la merde. Mais euh, ça fait rien, ça fait rien. Ça peut s'écraser comme une merde. T'es quand même pourri, t'es quand même une ordure, t'es quand même un salaud. Mais ta bande, mais ta bande, t'es vraiment un con, t'es vraiment une ordure. Personne téléphone, mais personne téléphone. Mais tout le monde s'en fout quand je suis gentil. Mais vous êtes quoi Vous êtes vraiment des pourris, mais vraiment des pourris. Vous êtes de bons cons, finalement. Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing Uh, we're projecting our voices through the microphone. What for? Uh, to come in contact with your ear, and then you come back in contact with ours again. Okay, but can you play some music? No way. Unmitigated that 
goodness hour. For that Billy Asu from Pacific 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 Northwest Coast Indian Music. And there was a Hamatsa song sung by Billy Asu, yes, as I said. And the Hamatsa was a secret society composed of men who had come under the protection of the cannibal spirits, were called the wild men of the woods Hamatsa, and in their ceremonies were mistakenly referred to by white men as cannibal dancers. In their ceremonies, dances and songs were used extensively. The secret society ascribed to the Katawudi was held in the highest esteem and given the highest prestige within the tribe. And here's part of the song. Fifty years last time... Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that's not part of the song. It's a description of the song. Fifty years last time, the Hanam- Hamatsa must dance around four times around the big house. He climbs up four times the Hamatsa pole to attract the people and make the poles sway. When he first comes out, he wears nothing but a fir tree. He must stay four years in the woods. People go there around him. He jumps up 50 feet. He runs away again. This is done to hire, attain a higher standard among the people. And isn't that not uh, a lesson for today's society? When a person is associated with a work of art, uh, the art takes on a uh, special aura and vice versa. What is this recording for? <laughs> <laughs> Words. <coughs> <coughs> it's the pr- p- p- problem with language. I am now going to s- take the windshield off the microphone, stick it into my mouth, and turn the microphone off. I've had enough of recording. Talking. 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 It's good, it's good. <laughs> it has a good beat. I can dance to it. Everybody can dance to it. So we go.
your friends, right? Your friends, you're drinking, uh, you're smoking, then you get up and dance, and you're just, you know, within reason, within good taste. <laughs> nice. Well, it's just the same one, but oh, now see, now it's just talking. See, see, see at home and you're listening. I just complaining. Ah, oh, see. <laughs> but you don't want to complain. You want to dance. You want to feel good. You know. You paid all your bills. You want a lottery.
physical boundaries is an act of violence. As soon as you become conscious, you become violent. It's always war on this planet. There's only one game, and that game is war, and all games are hostile. I'm at Cook's Landing. 
Uh, I've lived for 23 years. We moved there because our children was running around in the reservation, like all children get when they become teenagers. So we moved out, out of the reservation. We moved to the river. So we, we reside there now. We go fishing whenever we can. But the states of Oregon and states of Washington came in and they told us we weren't supposed to fish. My husband argued with them. They said, he said we had ratified treaty and everything was reserved by the Indians themselves. Nothing, the government never granted us anything. We reserved our tra traditional rights. We reserved the Columbia River and its tributaries where an Indian fish, we just gave the sportsmen a privilege to fish. They told us there was no more fish. We have to conserve. But it is not our right to conserve. It is the white man, non-Indian, that should conserve. Because they promised us they'd build hatcheries all along the Columbia River, and we didn't have to worry about anything. Now this promise is breaking. We have to get out of the river, and they are evicting us and we hate to leave because in the treaty, whenever we abandoned our rivers, well, the non-Indians will move in. My husband is in penitentiary just for fishing and trading, the Indian way of life. We have, we have lived like this for a long time. In time of memorial, we have been trading and bartering with other countries. We went great distance to trade for the things we didn't have. We tra traveled long ways to trade with the other Indians.
Mr. Feuchner threw his coffee cup across the room. Then he threw the saucer, his spoon, the half-empty ketchup bottle, the napkin dispenser, the salt shaker, a knife, three napkins, Horst Blenheim's briefcase, his chair, Horst's chair, Margot Frotten's purse, his pen, wallet, and left boot, three more ketchup bottles, a bag of socks that Nora Lehman had bought on sale at Fellman's department store. jacket, one of the Jacob twins, a pair of sunglasses, Augusta Riesenfeld's lasso apsole, five rolls, a pot, a garlic press, two whole salamis, a can of tomato paste, and Fred's cake. <laughs> then the police came and threw Feuchner into the back of their car. It was a Tuesday.
by these everyday sounds. Must be a simple way. Make everything quite clear. We think. I got it. Imagine that this is part of the total picture. And over here is another part of the total picture. I'm <laughs> 
Who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? Eddie White. Who's in charge here? Eddie White. Eddie White. Wet strike? Art strike. I didn't know about it. Thanks, Fanny. Dans une église, je marie mon sang à ton sang, ton nom à mon nom. The crucible of conversion. About what? Strike. I can invent it. La grève de la quoi? La grève de l'art? At least something I understand about modern art. Quoi? Quoi? What do I think about the art strike? I have no idea. I didn't hear nothing about it yet. What do you think of the art strike? What do I think of what? The art strike. What art strike? <laughs> Lock them out and crush them. No, Line them up against the wall and shoot them. What, what art strike are we talking about here? Are you going to tell us about it? <laughs> I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you. Art is conceptually defined by a self-perpetuating elite and is marketed as an international commodity. The activity of its production has been mystified and co-opted. Its practitioners have become manipulable and or marginalized through self-identification with the term artist and all it applies. That's good. I like that. Art sucks. What is that? Is that part of this thing here? It sucks. Oh, yes. What's this part? <coughs> Give up art, save the starving. What art strike? 
Now, see, I have to disagree with this. Oh, I disagree with it, too. Yeah, you really do. And the reason why you do have to disagree with this is because, yet again, it assumes that the responsibility for these kinds of things like falls back on an artist in some kind of way, which is really grandiose and self-important. And if these people really meant to do anything about anything, what they would do is lobby their governments to actually create change, or, you know, armed revolution is what I'm into. You know, total overthrow of the capitalist state. Sure. Getting this all down? Am I raging or frothing at the mouth? What kind of magazine is this yawn thing, anyway? <laughs> Commies, obviously. <laughs> I'll say. Well, they'll miss the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be any uh, geese flying down from space. No more landscapes? No more ideas sold for $26,000? No more one-of-a-kind art sales at the Chimo Inn? <laughs> no more dogs playing poker? <laughs> no more googly-eyed kids with the big, big, big tear eyes? They shouldn't, I know, but they shouldn't be unionized, that's why. It's because of the union. Yeah, but they have to eat. They have to eat? Yeah, eat, you know, eat, food. Are you, are you unionized? No. <laughs> so, and do you eat? Yes. See, there you go. I, I, what did I say? I said lock them out. I think I said lock them up before. That's wrong. I meant lock them out and crush them like ants.